Hello guys and gals, uh, welcome back to another ROTW, not necessarily a rant of the week, I guess, uh, cause it's more than a week, but whatever. This time we're talking about Capcom, yes. A lot of you have sent me these, um, articles way back, way back, before the last ROTW, and, yeah, I finally got to look into it, and, you know, Capcom is pretty much broke at this point. Now, according, you know, you know, to the news, you know, news, they only have like 150 something million dollars in the bank. Now, I don't know if that's went up or lower as time went on, but it's, it's, it's around that same area, probably, as of now. You know, and the thing is, is Capcom dead? Because you might be thinking, oh, well, 150 million dollars is a lot of money. Not to a publisher slash developer as big, as big of a behemoth as Capcom. All right, we're talking about, they, they need a lot more money than they have right now. This is the actual estimates. Now, what does this mean for Capcom? It means they probably won't be around. You know, let me tell you why. It costs a lot of money to make a game, especially more now that the PS4 and the Xbox One and the Wii U are out. These are next-gen systems that are going to be requiring a higher budget to run shit on. Now again, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, a game costs $200 million to make. Not necessarily, you know, unless you have extraordinarily high games like Grand Theft Auto V, where it did cost me $200, 200, not $200, $200 million to make. Uh, but usually it depends on, you know, what type of game it is. Monster Hunter games, you know, as popular as they are, don't really cost, like, GTA V level price, simply because assets are reused, and sometimes there are mobile games too, so mobile games are, in the end, cheaper to make too than there are big, full-fledged console and PC titles. So again, it doesn't necessarily mean Capcom might be dead, They're de they definitely can do other things, but when will they start, you know? Capcom has pretty much changed, considering, you know, what they were way back in the day. Now, when I grew up with Capcom, the game you're seeing on the screen is Resident Evil 4. This is the point where I thought Capcom was, at, you know, like, this is a great Resident Evil game that you're seeing right there, Resident Evil 4. Some people hate it, some people like it. It's sort of this love-hate thing, but this is one of my, this is honestly, if I had to pick, I would pick this Resident Evil the most. It's probably the most, like, jaw-droppingly changed one to me, too. You know, when I was a kid, and when this game came out, you know, on the GameCube, right? And then I, I picked it up later for PS2, but when I played it at my friends for the first time, it was like the best game ever. It had the tank controls, which I don't care what anyone says, it's Resident Evil. Of course it's gonna have tank controls, okay? Did you play Resident Evil 1? Did you play any Resident Evil, okay? Of course it's gonna have tank controls. It had like, the weapons felt so like, you know, gruesome. I mean, the shotgun in this game is beyond, you know, fucking amazing, all right? This is the best shotgun in any video game history, okay? And then you have, like, you know, some of the most memorable action scenes, too. Like, I mean, this is when cutscenes started, and cutscenes, in my opinion, were sort of cool. This game wasn't that heavy on them, but, you know, it was kind of cool being in the cutscene and, you know, jumping around and shit, you know, running away from the boulders. But it was, it was one of the best experiences, too. But on top of that, it was actually a very valuable experience. Value. That's a key word, because this game, when I got it on the PS2, not, not only did it come with the original campaign, which is long as shit, and it has a lot of places you're going to, alright, it has another campaign on top of it, you know, Assignment Ada. And, you know, no, sorry, not Assignment Ada, Separate Ways. Separate Ways is pretty much the same exact, you know, campaign here, you can, like, the same locales, but it's changed up to support Ada and, her, like, what she does in the other part of the campaign, which is beyond amazing when you look at value because it's like another campaign added into it again it's not you know i don't it's not as lengthy really you know when i played it initially as the original campaign was but another campaign regardless you had assignment ada which was you know sort of like this one mission kind of thing there wasn't really any saving between it and it was also on the gamecube as well i believe correct me if i'm wrong but it was another you know brilliant addition to the game you got like you got like unlockables collectibles out of it you got skins you got all that stuff for beating the game on professional you know and all that crazy stuff and that is value. If Capcom were to do that now in the current Capcom climate, RE4 would be DLC-fied no matter what. You'd have separate ways as like a $10 add-on, assignment A to maybe like five bucks. Then you'd probably have some, you know, mercenaries mode, like a character's probably being auctioned off or something like packs of characters. You know, you might even see like some multiplayer element tackled on. You saw this with RE5 too with versus mode. And I love RE5, RE5 is like, I love that game. But versus mode was fucking bullshit. Let's be honest there. And not only the fact, they had like Mercenaries Reunion, which is basically like, again, character packs of mercenaries. You know? And when you look at that, alright, that's not value. Yeah, you have the original campaign, but all that stuff should have been there day one. You know what I mean? Versus mode should have been in there day one. The extra two, you know, fucking campaigns, Lost in Nightmares, 
um, des the desperate, you know, escape should have been in there. You know, same thing with RE6. I like RE6 too. Initially, I hated it, but RE6 I like because again, I do see the value there. There's a bunch of campaigns I like them. Of course, it's kind of Gears of War, which I don't like. If it was RE4 with the campaigns, I would fucking love it. Okay, but that's kind of what that's kind of what happens. All right. There's also other franchises that never really wasn't a Mega Man, but you know, Mega Man. People like it. It's an amazing game. Capcom fucked over because, you know, they canceled like a fuck ton of them anyways. But whatever. I'm going off on a tangent here. Capcom has brought a lot, alright? But recently, they've devolved, alright? They've decided, hey, you know, there's DLC. Let's abuse it. And people don't like it. That's why their games aren't really selling a whole lot, you know? That's why Lost Planet 3, believe me or not, didn't really sell a whole lot. You know, that's why a lot of their games don't, because they're tackling on all these DLC purchases and consumers like me and you. Because remember, games cost $60, 50 if you're on PC, depending on what game it is, you know, 40 if you're on like uh, portable systems. That's a lot of money. Okay, that's a lot of money to be putting in a game. And if you if you're gonna put money into a game, you want to put money into a game that brings you value. You know what I mean? You want to put money into a game that gives you what you want. If you put money into like you know, something like fucking whatever EA makes too. Not not everything EA makes, but like a majority of their fucking shit. You'll get like pretty much nothing because it's so like fucking paywalled and everything. Same thing with our Capcom titles too. You know, when Street Fighter 4 came out, and I was never a big Street Fighter fan. A lot of people were pissed because they had characters locked on the disc. Meaning they bought the game for $60, but they had to pay an extra, you know, bit of cash to download a key that would unlock that character onto their game. Which is bullshit. If you pay for something on a disc, it should be yours. Not, not just because, oh, we're trying to maintain compatibility. That's bullshit. It's on a disc, therefore you unlock it so that people who purchased your game can play that character. Simple. That's all that should be said. But again, you know, fuck what I say. And because of these simple choices, they've also made other decisions too. You know, something like Breath of Fire 6 being on the iOS Android PC. It's like turned into some MMO kind of freemium fucking title or some shit. I'm not, I'm not even sure there. It could be like classic, you know, Breath of Fire. And I'm not even that big of a Breath of Fire person. But looking at that, that's a pretty big insult to people who like the franchise. You know. But they're not on the right track. You know what I mean? They haven't hit this epiphany that because of their actions... They're fucking going in a rut. They're digging a hole. And at this point, with the money they have left, I don't think they can come back. Because think about it. They can't they can't make, you know, new games. Especially with these new systems. It costs more money to make them. So what's going to happen to them? Well, more than likely, they might just die out. But before they die out, here's some good news. They might just sell off their franchises, which is what THQ did. This is why a lot of other people are running, you know, Saints Row, and a lot of people bought this, this, and this. That's what could happen, all right? So think about it. Kaiji Inafune is building his own successor to, you know, Mega Man. What if he was to purchase the Mega Man rights, you know, with the Kickstarter money I think he got? That would have been pretty fucking sweet. That, that way, gamers will actually have a successful, brand new Mega Man that's actually like classic Mega Man, that has that same soul invested into it. That means people like me who love Resident Evil can get that classic Resident Evil experience. And you sort of gotten it with Revelations, but again, a full classic Resident Evil experience. That would be amazing. The closest I had to that was like RE5 Lost and Nightmares, and that's what the camera fucking Easter egg too. But think about it. That's what you can get. You know what I mean? There's really nothing to lose here. Not Nothing really to lose. I mean, Capcom is dying, but if these franchises get sold off to better developers in my eyes, then that's all good and dandy. If we get current Capcom, and again, I like Capcom, I don't hate them. They're one of my favorite fucking developers, too. I love them for Resident Evil, I love them for Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter I spent so much time on. It's good shit, but still, okay? I don't want to be dlc I don't want to, I don't want to, like, get my games completely DLC'd, alright? I don't want this shit to be ruined, so, you know. Capcom, unless they can completely do a 180 on all their policies, whether it be online, you know add-ons and all that other shit how they sell their games you know physical digital whatever maybe they could come back maybe maybe they could come back maybe i don't know but considering the funds they have and we just entered a new generation you know not like even a week ago i don't know if they're gonna live on but again tell me what you think in the comments below if you know more about the subject like there's people that are business analysts you know go ahead watch it tell me tell me what you can think all right because tell me what you know whatever but that's really it. So write in the comments below what you think. Do you want Capcom to die? Do you hope that their franchise gets sold off and sold off to who? Let me know all that stuff in the comments below. Uh, this is me, Mudahar. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, this is me, Mudahar. <laughs> and I am out.